Welcome back to Investment Fund Secrets. I'm Bridger Pennington, and today I wanna to talk about how to find investors for your fund. All right, my friends, welcome back today. I am very excited to talk about this. This has been a long-awaited topic of how to actually find investors. A lot of you have asked me this question. This is the most common question, right? Because people in our last couple episodes, we talked about, okay, Bridger, I, I love funds. I know it's, it's great for tax. It's a great way to make wealth. The richest people in the world all run funds. Awesome. I get that. Number two, I understand that I don't have to be, have a Harvard degree to do it. We talked about that in the last episode. You don't need the credentials. You can actually connect the experts and the money raisers and start your own fund and be the manager in the middle. Now today though, I wanna dive deeper into that one side of actually raising the money because that is a huge concern for a lot of people and it's something you shouldn't actually be that concerned about. And I have three steps, simple steps to walk you through today to find investors that'll give you tons of money. I gotta tell you today, I'm, I'm kinda dressed up a little bit more. We had our, our close for quarter two and we just finished our all of our accounting and books for this last quarter and right now we're doing a distribution to our investors, which I'm so excited about. We just got the numbers in. This quarter alone, our fund got a 12.3% return just for this quarter, which is awesome. Like our investors freaking love us right now and that's what I'm trying to talk to you about today is how to make your investors love you and incentivize them. Especially this last one, number three, I think is the most crucial piece you need to add into your fund. We're gonna dive into it right now. First off though, I was a couple weeks ago, I was talking with a couple buddies, they were starting a fund, real estate fund. One of the guys, he said, man, there's just not a lot of money out there. He's like, we've been looking and there's not a lot of money and I was like, what? Are you kidding me? There's not, a, I like, and we're, we live in the same area. Like we're in the same area, same pool, trying to find this kind of the same investors. It's like, yeah, there's just no money in this valley. Like we gotta really stoop down to find anything. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like there's money everywhere. Like I have too much money. My investors are calling me and asking me to give me more money. There's money flying around everywhere in this valley. And he was talking about raising 50 grand, 75 grand. I was like, whoa, like we need to talk way bigger numbers. We need to talk about hundreds of thousand dollars, millions of dollars that you can go out and raise. I've been able to peep into this world through my dad and other contacts. And, and now that I run a fund, be able to see actually how much wealth is out there. There are tons and tons of entrepreneurs and just wealthy businessmen that actually don't show off their wealth that much. When you think of wealth, you think of the people you see on Instagram that have the Ferrari and the, the private jet and the Lambo, right? And they're all cruising around. There's not a lot of people like that, but there are a lot of people that make a lot more money than those people online with those big toys. Um, great example, I, I shared in the last episode, my dad, right? He grew, grew up, was running a fund, made tons of money and was still driving a car with a dent in it with 200,000 miles on it. It was a 1999 Ford Expedition. It's a piece of crap because car, I named him Ernst out of just love for this car. That he drove that car for 10 years while he was running his fund. And part, his partners finally were like, dude, you need to get a better car because we're actually talking to clients and trying to raise like hundreds of millions of dollars now. He's like, all right, fine. And he upgraded like to a barely a better car that looks a little classier in the parking lot. But he had tons of money to invest in whatever he wanted. He did that on purpose so he could give himself the freedom. He had plenty of money. He could have gone out and bought a Lambo if he wanted to, but he didn't. He wanted to invest, right? Those are the people you're looking for. So first thing, get it out of your mind. There are tons of people with money. Your city, wherever you're at. I grew up in Salt Lake City, not a big city. There is so much money that I, in my just small realm, have been able to contact with people with hundreds of millions, even billions of dollars. Two months ago, I was with two billionaires talking and hung out with them for an afternoon that are from Utah. I mean, Utah of all places, right? So that's the first thing. Get that out of your mind. There is so much money. And if your investors are gawking and are stretching to give you $25,000, $50,000, those aren't your right investors. Just say no to them. Say thanks. You're not my type of guy. And when I tell people this, they're like, whoa, they're like offended a little bit. And I just say, no, just turn away investors. You're the fund manager. You can turn away investors. Investors don't run you. You run the fund and you use their money. That's all they have is money. And there's plenty of people with money. So if investors are giving you guff, they want to manage something, they want to be a partner. No, just say, no, I'm going to go find other money. The first thing that you need, and my dad, I was talking to him about this and other mentors when I start my first fund, they said, the first thing you need is a great deal. Raising money should not be your first objective when starting a fund. So I want to give you an analogy. And this is one of my mentors gave this to me. He said, Bridger, right now, this is an analogy. I have a Ferrari that's worth 500 grand. It's up in Canada though, near Alaska, Northern Canada. Right now it's, I have a backdoor deal. This guy just, he's a super wealthy guy. Just, he just wants to get it out. Somebody just needs to take it from him because he's gonna kill himself. His wife's making himself, whatever the situation is. He'll sell it to you right now for 50 grand. And I can guarantee that you can sell it for at least 450 grand, at least maybe even 500 grand back here 
in the United States. All you need to do though is you need to get 50 grand and then maybe a grand or two to, to fly up there on a plane ticket. Now you have zero money out of your own pockets. You've got 10 days to do this. Could you go and find 50, let's say $52,000 right now? You got 10 days, could you go out and find the money? Do you have the resources to do it? And at first he asked me this question, I was like, I don't know. He's like, are you kidding me? You hesitated? And I was like, uh, yeah. And he's like, you need to wake up. $50,000 Ferrari in Canada. All you need to do is find 50 grand, are you kidding me? Ask me, I'll give you the money, ask somebody else. Go find an investor, friends, family, anybody, and say, hey, you'll, we can split the profits, 75 to you, 25 to me. Who's not gonna do that deal? It's a fantastic deal, right? And I said, yeah, that's a good point. And he said, you could find the 50 grand. And I'm like, yeah, I could find the 50 grand. He said, what if it was 100 grand? You need 100 grand in the next 10 days, and then you're gonna make 500 grand guaranteed. Could you go and find 100 grand? And I was like, yeah, I guess, you know? So what about 250 grand? I was like, man, that's a lot. You know, I started thinking about that. I was like, could I find 250 grand? He's like, think about four or five people, six people. Could you find it? And I said, yeah, I guess I can find it. He said, yes, you can. That's the first thing you need to believe in yourself when you're starting a fund. Don't think about the dollar signs. A lot to you isn't a lot to them. And all they're looking at, investors, is a ROI, return on investment. If they can see that they're gonna give you 100 grand and you can turn it into 500 grand and it's pretty guaranteed, let's do the deal, right? When starting on a fund, the first thing to do is go out and find the deal first. Real estate people, this is perfect for you guys. Go out and find the perfect property first. Let's say you're doing multifamily, you find a 30 unit apartment complex, it's beautiful, you have a really good price off market and you can prove it, the value of that property is up here and you're gonna buy it for down here. Showing that to investor, put it in a pitch deck and say, hey, do you want in or out? Like we're doing this deal in a couple weeks, like do you want in? And investor's gonna look at that like, like yeah. And it's way easier to raise money that way instead of saying, hey, Mr. Investor, we're planning on in the future in maybe a year or two to buy some real estate. Do you wanna give us money now? And we're gonna wait for a year or two and figure it out. And they're like, no, screw you, man, get out of here. But if you say, hey, we got a deal right here. We actually got another deal behind that too if you're interested well. We need money now. Like we are ready to move. It, it, it pushes investors, it, it, they give, see the vision of what you're doing, they see that you've done the d due diligence and that you have a great plan. And if you can articulate that plan to the investor, it's so easy to get money. So that is step number one, have a great investment. Now step number two is you need to start being where investors are. A lot of us grow up in just normal neighborhoods, normal places. You're not really exposed to this wealthy group and crowd that I've recently been able to kind of peek into and it's like, wow, there's so many rich people there and you hear about networking events and these parties and things like that you have got to start leveraging relationships to get into those situations and start talking to those people now you don't now big disclaimer don't just pitch them the first time get to know them this is just social skills 101 right but get to know people ask them what they do and they're obviously going to ask you what you do and you can say hey yeah i run a fund we do real estate investing we do lending, whatever it is. So, oh, that's interesting, what are you guys doing? Oh, we're looking at deals like this and this is the type of deals we're doing. You don't even have to pitch them at that point. All you have to do is just say, hey, if you're, if you're ever interested, if we have a good deal come, come across my table, am I cool to give you a call and see if you wanna just I wanna get on on that deal? If not, no worries, we don't have, to, don't have to worry about it. Nine times out of 10, the person will say, yeah, I love that. People love good deals, back to step number one, right? So I was talking to my dad and, and like I told you before in the last story, he had found a partner that was really good at raising money. And I mean, they're just starting out. They're bare bones. They're bootstrapping this whole thing. They've got some investors coming in. His partner shows up one day and says, hey, I just bought season tickets to the Utah Jazz box seats for the whole next year. It's $48,000. My dad was like, what? Like, with what money? He's like, oh, with our money. And I was like, are you kidding me? He's like, whoa, he's like, hold on. Don't freak out yet. This is the decision that is gonna take us to the next level. And my dad's like, okay, he was about out of his seat because my dad's very frugal. <laughs> he says, okay, imagine this. We need to talk to executives, CEOs, rich people, right? It's like, yeah, all of these people have gatekeepers. They all have an assistant. They have somebody that if you say, hey, can I meet with Mr. Johnson or Mrs. You know, Anderson? They're gonna say no. They say, no, sorry, she's busy, he's busy. They're in a meeting, whatever. Imagine the same scenario though, you call that assistant and you say, hey, I'm calling for uh, Mrs. Anderson. Tonight I have two tickets for the Jazz box seats. They're playing the Lakers at 7 p.m. I was wondering if Mrs. Anderson and her husband wanted to come to the game. Um, you know, we're gonna have dinner and uh, it's in a big box. There's gonna be about 50 people in there and it's a big networking event. 
that assistant is gonna get fired if they don't pass that message on through to the executive, right? And so this is what they started doing. They started calling executives, that would get through, and then they would take these uber rich people to the jazz game, box seats, they'd have a huge dinner and everything would be really nice and they would sit down and talk to them for four to five hours, right? Because you have the pre-dinner, you have the, the halftime thing and then after usually there's a dinner as well or a, a mingle kind of a thing. I mean, it's a long event. They do that on purpose, right? So you can, over about four hours, you can talk business and they started lining up investor after investor after investor. That's how they scaled their fund from $13 million to $130 million to then $596 million and then over a billion dollars and now they're, they're at $15 billion. That's how they started out, raising money. Simple tricks to get in the door, to get past the gatekeeper. Okay, so that's lesson number two. So lesson number one is have a great deal. Number two is be where investors are. Get into networking parties, start talking to people, start sharing what you're doing in work. And one more note on section number two is, and seriously, these investors are everywhere. You can go on Craigslist right now and just type in real estate investor, real estate hard money lender, and I bet you five to 10 names pop up and you can start calling those people and say, hey, we've got real estate deals, we've got other Forex kind of deals. These people are just looking for a good deal. Just start talking to people about your deals you've lined up, the money's gonna start finding you. Now, lesson number three, this is the most important though, is when structuring your fund, you have got to structure it to incentivize investors. Now, what I mean by that, and I'm gonna get a little bit technical with you, go to the, go to the crazy level is what I like to call it, um, with your fund. So you're setting up your fund, and this is what I did setting up my first fund. I thought, man, I gotta incentivize my investors somehow to give them the edge, to make it a win-win for everybody. So what I did and it was contrary to a lot of other funds. Most funds out there, when they're pitching an investor, they say, okay, and Mr. Investor, we're gonna take a 2% management fee, meaning you invest a million dollars, off the top, automatically, we get paid 2% of that million dollars just to manage the money. And as investors don't really like this, sometimes it's 3% even. And then they say, this is what a typical fund does, they say, okay, now we have a, usually have a pref, and so we're gonna take the first 2%, but then you get the preference, um, usually six, seven, eight percent let's let's call it 7%, uh, preference meaning the first seven percent of all returns goes to the investor okay so I don't make any money on investments until we've made at least seven percent on the eight percent that's when I start making money and uh, some funds you'll structure it differently sometimes they do a, uh, what they call a catch-up or things like that but just to keep it simple now the let's say the seven percent pref goes to the investor. The eighth percent we're going to split. Let's say eighty twenty. This would be like an eighty twenty fund, right? So eighth percent, eighty percent goes to the investor. Twenty percent of that return goes to the fund. Ninth percent is eighty twenty again. We split that eighty twenty. Tenth percent eighty twenty gets split. Eleventh percent eighty twenty gets split. So if our fund gets a return of fifteen percent for the year, the first seven percent goes to the investor, and then that last eight percent gets divvied up 80% to the investor, 20% to me. Now that's called carried interest. That's the term is carried interest, is that on top part. So I, I wanna give you a little context of what I'm talking about. So that's a typical fund will do that. And most investment funds, like mutual funds, will return like 8% and they make money on the fees though. But you're managing a $500 million fund, 2% on 500 million isn't too bad, it's $10 million, right? That you make it on management fee and then you get the carried interest on top which is taxed way low, which is just amazing, right? So you actually get a lot of money. It sounds like small increments, but it actually is a lot of money because it's not your own money. You're getting it on the total fund. So you actually end up making a ton of money. Now with this though, I said, I gotta incentivize my investor somehow. So what I did, I said, hey, Mr. Investor, Mrs. Investor, most funds charge a 2% fee. I'm not charging that, screw that. 2% fee, gone. Okay, I don't get any investment fees. I'm gonna give you an 8% pref. So the first 8% of all money goes directly to you. Then I said, I'm gonna do a thing called a catch up, and this is a pretty standard as well. The ninth and 10th percent, the full percentiles go to me. So first 8% to you, the ninth whole 100% goes to me, 10th percentile 100% goes to me, and then anything above 10%, we're gonna split 80-20. So 80% to you, 20% to me. And I said, I don't make any money unless you make at least 8%. I'm gonna work my tail off at for you to make 8% and I can make a little bit after that. And so that sounds awesome. And then I said also, and this is crucial as well, you need to invest your own money into your own fund. It could be a small amount. You don't have to tell your investor, but I said, hey, I'm investing too. 
I'm an investor in this fund. I'm, I just say, hi, I'm putting money in. And the same thing, right? I'm working for the investor. I wanna get you at least 8% and then I'll, we can split money after that. And they said, awesome. My fund over the last year and a half, I told this before, has a 60, about a 65, 66% IRR, which is internal rate of return. And we've returned about a 54% to our investors for the last year, which is awesome, right? And they love it. And uh, I mean, it's just seriously incredible. And I've made a lot of money doing it. They've made a lot of money doing it. And it's been a fantastic ride. And my investors love it. And the best thing, I'll tell you the best, best thing about doing great with your first initial five, 10 investors, whatever it is, those investors all talk to each other. They all have friends. And guess what they love to do? They love to brag about their investments. Those guys love to sit down at dinners, at bars, whatever it is, and say, oh man, yeah, my stocks are up, my you know Bitcoin's down, and they say, oh, well, I've got an investment with this guy named Bridger for this, you know, your fund. Yeah, we're doing fantastic. The last you know six months, he's gotten me a huge return. We're doing real estate, we're doing stocks, we're doing forex, we're doing lending, whatever it is, all over the country, and it's killing it. They go, wow, really? What's his name? They go, oh, it's James Bridger, and they they will look you up and find you. That's the power of getting you start out small, but getting that good track record and leveraging that into more investors. That's today's episode and I'm excited for you guys. Tell me your stories. Go to investmentfundsecrets.com. I'd love to hear your comments, your stories on how you are starting and building your fund. See you guys in the next one.